Your thoughts after hearing from the ambassador on what appears to be the eve of a ground invasion, whether it comes in a day or two or maybe a week, this idea of the president of the United States dropping into the middle of all of this, is that a smart move for Joe Biden? <laughs> well, let me unpack that a little bit. Uh, uh, I just heard the ambassador say it is not Israel's intent to occupy Gaza. He also said Israel's plan is to remove the Hamas leadership in Gaza and help deal with the uh, number of hostages. I just heard that Hamas claims there are 250 hostages from many nationalities, but certainly a number are U.S. citizens in Gaza. Uh, so that is what he said. Uh, I think it's important that President Biden is considering a trip. In fact, he may be en route. I hope if he goes, he not only goes to Israel, but he goes to the Sunni Arab states and maybe to uh, uh, maybe even attempts a meeting. I, I can't imagine this would happen with the, uh, the leadership of the Palestinian Authority. That's not Hamas. Hamas is a terror group. Mm -hmm. But at least mm -hmm. a meeting with uh, uh, the neighborhood. And uh, I think it's important to articulate an end game. Uh, President Biden is right to support Israel's right to defend itself. Israel was brutally attacked. It's a, it was a moment of moral clarity. But he should articulate what is an end game for the region, which, after all, was underway. And that was, at least as I understood it before this, uh, uh, some kind of a deal between Saudi Arabia and Israel and a path forward for a Palestinian state. Uh, that's a good end game, I think. Uh, with the other, with buy-in from the other states. If that is still the end game, how do we get there? What's the strategy to get there now? And it has to include removal of Hamas leadership. I don't see any option there. And by the way, the leadership of Hamas doesn't even live in, in Gaza. It <laughs> lives in uh, Doha, Qatar. Uh, does everybody know that? The, the leadership lives as well in as Doha. Uh, which as well as Istanbul, yeah, Turkey, ahead. Jane, that was going that was going to be my question. How do you root out Hamas on the <laughs> ground in Gaza when the political leadership flies between Doha and Istanbul? Well, I think it is a fair uh, request by the by the Israelis uh, to uh, put those folks under some kind of uh, of uh, house arrest, given this action that they just took. I understand that, that Qatar has, has uh, complicated relationships with us as well as others. Qatar actually uh, built uh, Al Udeed, which I've been to many times, which is the uh, operating base we use to coordinate our actions, military actions in the Middle East. And Qatar was a very good friend to take in thousands, 85,000 people leaving Afghanistan af after our abrupt exit. And, and do DNA tests and place them elsewhere. That was a big gift. Um, on the other hand, though, uh, I think this relationship with Hamas leadership is very troubling. And if they're in Istanbul, too, it's very troubling. So if, we, if Israel really wants to eliminate that leadership, maybe President Biden or others could help uh, make sure that that leadership is not able to cause any damage wherever it is. Well, Jane, it seems like a presidential visit would be fraught with with political challenges potentially here, assuming uh, that a ground invasion does follow the president's visit, he kind of puts his name on whatever Israel chooses to do here. Uh, so I wonder, if he does show up in person, is part of his message restraint? Yes, that is part of his message. Let's understand the, f the fronts of this war could expand. Uh, there's not only Gaza, but as you've pointed out, there are attacks possibly uh, from Hezbollah to the north, which is a different terror group also supported by Iran, uh, and, and uh, uh, which has 100,000 uh, precision-guided missiles, which have a range to hit Jerusalem. This is highly dangerous, and a number of Israelis have been evacuated from northern settlements in Israel. Uh, I was there for the uh, 2006 war when those rockets were dumb scuds and not too much damage was caused, but now it would be. And there's also a possibility of a civil war uh, on the West Bank, which is to the east of, uh, of Israel, and that destabilizing Jordan. So, yes, I think urging restraint would be important, but not backing down, and I doubt that he will, on the statement he issued with moral clarity that Israel was brutally attacked and has a right to defend herself. Uh, how that, what that defense looks like, the shape of it, and in what kind of a long-term strategy is what I'm talking about. And I'm suggesting mm -hmm. that, in fact, I didn't suggest on this show, but a possibility for 
why this attack occurred now was to blow up the very deal that could be the good end game for this whole thing. And that deal was the Saudis talking to the Israelis uh, about a relationship plus uh, a path to an independent Palestinian state. And why would they want to blow that up? This is Iran we're talking about. Iran would want to blow that up because it doesn't want its arch enemy Israel to have a relationship with Saudi Arabia. So if we could get back to that, I think that would be, uh, or get forward to that uh, with a much more clear-eyed view of the damage that has occurred and the fact that Israel carefully is responding, I think that that could be a, 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 a good strategy to embrace. According to people I've spoken to, Jane, normalization plans are still going to be happening. There's just the fact of the matter is no meetings are happening at this moment because everyone is focused on what is going on in Israel um, and what is going on in Gaza. Do you see normalization, though, happening under the Biden administration? Normalization of what? Saudi Arabia and Israel. I, I think... Uh, I don't know. I mean, that was an aspiration, and it was getting closer before this happened. I, I'm mentioning the—I just mentioned the fact that, that the justification, justification for this horrific, brutal invasion might have been to blow that up. I think that seems more and more logical. Do I see us getting back to that? Uh, I hope so. I don't think tomorrow morning. I don't think this is over. I think Hamas leadership has to be removed. That's Israel's objective. Uh, and it would be wonderful if the uh, border with Egypt could be open so humanitarian supplies could go into uh, Gaza and uh, the, uh, a number of Americans and other nationalities could leave Gaza through that border. Uh, and uh, that's been the request. It was supposed to happen. I'm surprised that the Egyptians are continuing to block it.